Hello and welcome back. My name is Megan and today I'm going to show you how I get my life together. This is the time of year where we're trying to create new habits and improve our lifestyles and I just thought this would be a great time to show you how I plan my life and basically organize my day-to-day -day schedule. I know there are so many methods out there, there's so many things you can go out there and buy or order online, but this system that I'm going to show you today is super simple, easy, minimal equipment, you don't even need a planner or anything, but it definitely works because this is the system that me and my husband have been using for the last three years and I have no plans of changing it. I actually was just dying to buy a planner. I just love any stationary, cute, cute journal, stationary, anything like that. And I was really dying to buy a planner. And I have been researching for the last month about a planner I want. And honestly, none of the planners I've seen actually will serve me better than what I already have going on right now. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video and I'll show you how I schedule and plan my life. So it all starts with my calendar here behind me. And basically, this is just a giant poster frame that you can buy at AC More. I got it for a 50% off sometime or another and really was very cheap and cost effective. And then I went to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot too or any other paint store, and I got a whole pile of paint chips. And they actually were this shape here, but um, I just trimmed them down and rounded the corners, so we got this shape right here. And I did six rows with seven in each row, and that gives me six weeks on my calendar. And honestly, it's just as cheap as it gets. I felt really bad walking out of the store with a bunch of free paint samples. I felt like I was stealing. So I stopped at the front desk and told them what I was going to do and asked what I could pay for them. And they said, oh no, take however many you want. And believe me, I had a stack, more than this even. These are leftovers. I had a stack of these. And they're like, oh no, take them, that's fine. Um, you, don't, you don't owe anything. So that's definitely verified. It is free. I'm not saying you should take all the paint chips off the wall at your local Lowe's. But um, you can take some within reason for free and they don't care at all. Basically, I just used a dry erase expo marker to write everything on. So I'm actually going to clean this off. This is for the month of December. I'm going to clean this off right now, and then I'm going to show you kind of how I plan my life step by step. To clean off my poster frame, which is actually just a plastic cover, I first of all go over with a paper towel, and I try to go over and get off most of the dry erase marker. and go over it again just to take off any lines that are still there. Usually the ones that have been there from the beginning of the month are kind of soaked in a little bit and need a little bit of elbow grease, but they come right off. After that, I just shine it up with some paper towel and Windex or a window cleaner of your choice, and then you're ready to go. It's big, easy to read, easy to use, and we can sit at the supper table and look at it while we're eating our supper, discuss our plans, get on the same page, and hopefully we don't have any cross wires or confusing double bookings or anything like that because it's happened before but this system has definitely cleared most of that up. So there we go, it's completely cleaned off and I've been using this exact poster frame for three years already and it's only now starting to get a little bit cloudy. So a cheap one from AC Moore will do the job really well. So I definitely think this method can fit into anyone's budget. Plus you can um, color coordinate it however you want to to match your home. I actually used to have brightly colored paint chips because I that was my style at the time. And yeah, I really liked it, but I decided it was time for a change. I can get actually six weeks on here instead of just four and I really like that. You could set it up that way with just four weeks but I really like it this way because when I'm starting to get to the end of the month I like to look ahead to the next month. Today's the 26th of December and I'm already putting up my January calendar so I can still fit on the last couple days of December moving into January and then I don't have to worry about running out of any squares or doubling up numbers on any of the squares because I have plenty of room. But depending on the size of your paint chips or the size of the poster frame that you decide to buy you might decide to just do five weeks or even four. Now, you can only see one month here at a time, and that might annoy some people, but so what happens if my mom calls me and says we have a family get together in February, I can't obviously put that on the calendar because I can only see one month at a time. 
I used to use a paper calendar that I would actually keep in my wallet. It was nice and small, but you know what? It wasn't always on me and I would go to work and it would be in my locker and people would ask me if I could work and I'd be like, I don't have it on me now, I don't know. And it just actually, I thought I loved it. I thought that the way my brain worked, I needed to be able to write things down so I'd remember it. But once I switched over to digital, I found out that it actually works way better because guess what? I always have my phone on me all the time, no matter what. I can see it in the dark. I don't have to worry about um, having any pen with me to write things down. I've been using my phone for the last year now and it kills me that I can't have a cute little planner with me. I just love them. But you know what? This system has worked so much better. So I have an Android. So I just use my Google Calendar. The icon's that little blue icon right here. I can sync it with my husband's schedule as well. And there we have my December things that I put in ahead of time. And here is January coming up. You can actually color code and everything like that. I do sometimes, but for the most part, I just kind of keep it with the default blue color, I think it is. If I have to put something in my schedule um, more than a month out, obviously I can't put it on this calendar here. Or if I'm away and I don't have this calendar in front of me, I just put it into my phone. So basically now, all I have is two things. My big giant wall calendar here and my Google Calendar. As things get added into my calendar, it fills up. Now I'm ready to write January's events onto the calendar. So I'm just gonna swipe into here and find my January page. And then I'm just gonna add that onto my poster frame calendar. So everything, doctor appointments, um, date nights, gym things, anything that you'd like to plan. You can be as specific as you want. You have plenty of space to write on these squares. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. Put on all the things that I have for January 2019. And so there I just put input all the events that are coming up that I know of as of now for January. And of course it fills up more and more as time goes on and things change, but that's why it's so easy with your Expo marker. I just keep it right there in my junk drawer and I can grab it out and make a change at any time. And then as far as I plan my life from week to week and from day to day, obviously God is in control and no day goes exactly as planned. But basically what I do is I pretty much just plan on doing laundry on I do laundry whenever I need to, but it usually definitely needs it on Mondays. And I love to be at home if I can on a Monday a lot of the day just so I can like clean up from the weekend and regroup and reorganize, meal plan, cook, that kind of thing, and just get a really good start to the week, a really productive day. I love Mondays. But of course, I'm not that stringent. If somebody wants to make plans with me or something comes up, I totally am fine with leaving the house on a Monday. And I actually usually do at least to go on a walk or something like that. As far as my weeks go with exercising and things like that, being colder in the winter, I like to use the Weatherbug app right there. And I know there are a lot of different weather apps, but that's just the one I like to use. I find it graphically interesting and it's just easy to understand. So what I do is I often on a Sunday will look at my calendar and see which days are going to be the nicest and make sure that those days I schedule in time to be outside. And of course in the summertime, um, maybe you're looking at the colder days, that those are the days you want to do your outside work or things like that. So I never sit down and plan my week without looking at the weather first. Basically the last thing I wanted to talk about was how I plan day to day. I used to have like a little planner that I would use and they're fun to look back on if you have one and you keep one. But I found that for my life, I never had it on me and I would always have to be like, oh man, I have to get out of bed, go get it, um, that kind of thing. It just wasn't working for me and then I would end up just planning in my head. So I started using Samsung Notes, another app on my phone. It's this red one right here. And there's all kinds of note apps you can use, Evernote, things like that. But this is just what I use. It's super simple. And often what ends up happening is I'll be laying in bed at night. I usually wait till the evening to actually plan the next day because depending what I got done or didn't get done, that kind of affects it. So I'll usually be laying in bed and I'll think about what the plans are for the next day and I make out a step-by-step -step what I want to get done. Of course, I like to put more on than I think I will get done. That doesn't overwhelm me personally, maybe some of you would. What I personally like to do is put on a little more than I actually think I can get done, just in case. It pushes me to be more productive than I would otherwise. So here, let me just pop up what I had on for today. I include my grocery lists in here. I've tried the paper grocery lists. I still use them occasionally, but how many times do you leave it on the dash in your car or you leave it at home or something? It's so frustrating. I'm never anywhere without my phone, so I just like to use Samsung Notes for that as well. So here I have my Wednesday checklist, and it usually starts out with about the same things. I love how you can check things off as you do them. You get the same satisfaction as using a pen for crossing things off. 
most of my days start out the same way with editing and devotions and then I often write down what I'm planning for breakfast. That doesn't change too much but I like to think through that make sure I have a game plan. Then I just usually do a chunk of work in the morning or do write errands, running, things like that. If I'm hanging out with friends it's usually the time that that will happen. I'm usually home around 1. That's usually when my daughter eats lunch and I usually eat with her and she usually goes down for a nap around 1.30 and I can usually count on her sleeping for about 3 hours which is wonderful. And that's what I try to do all my computer work, things like that. Um, I might be kind of weird this way, and this is maybe a little bunny trail, but it's my life, and I thought maybe you'd find this interesting. I try to do most of the work, like doing the laundry, emptying the dishwasher, cleaning, organizing, decluttering, um, outdoor work, all that stuff, while my daughter is awake so she can watch and learn maybe a little bit and just see what I'm doing. And then I save all my um, screen time stuff. I try to do all my screen time stuff, like editing and um, Amazon ordering, um, photo albums, anything like that. I try to do when she is taking her nap because I feel like she's not really learning anything by seeing me sitting there on a chair or the sofa just doing my thing on the computer. So I don't know, that's just a little preference I have and I don't know how long that's going to last. I have another baby on the way so who knows. Another thing I really like to do with this calendar is I often take a bump picture. Um, when I'm pregnant every month I just stand by the calendar so I can see what we did that month and I can also see the progression. Um, in my pregnancy and I really enjoyed looking back on those. I can kind of zoom in on my picture and see what we were doing that month, if it was busy or slow or whatever. And I just feel like that'll be interesting to look back on later in life. So I hope this video was super helpful. It is something that definitely works for some people. It works for me. Basically all I need is my phone and my poster calendar here on the wall. Just to recap, the apps that I use are Samsung Notes, Google Calendar, and the Weatherbug to help me plan my life. And so far, I really like it. If you implement it in your life, I almost guarantee that you're going to like it. But I do acknowledge that everybody's personality, brain, learning type can affect the way they like to plan. But this definitely works for us. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and inspiring. And I hope this motivates you to get a system together for 2019 so that you can have a productive year and live an intentional life instead of just going where the wind blows. I feel like having a game plan makes you much more of a productive person. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you got any ideas from it. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I will see you next time with another video.